Hey guys, it's Ben of Ben's Viewfinder here, and we are here today in my very small office. Um, when you move to a fancier place, your house gets smaller, and as did my office. But we are here today to talk about memory cards. I'm going to give you kind of a, just a complete overview. I don't know how much you know, but I'm going to start kind of at the bottom and work to the top, and we'll give you a little bit of explanation about what types of memory cards cameras use, what's important about them, um, the different types, and I'll explain what some of the numbers and craziness means when you look them up, because... As you know, it can be a confusing thing. So, there's two main types of memory cards that cameras use. Most of the lower end cameras, cameras up to very high end cameras actually use um, SD cards. But when you get up to the very, very high end, you have compact flash cards. And so these are better than these, I guess, um, because of their ability to read and write data faster. Now, you're going to add one of the big things you're going to probably wonder is there's a million brands of memory cards out there and what brand should you look at mine and what I'll tell you is that most of them all have to meet certain requirements to fall into the type of memory card they are so if they're um, their speed ratings or things like that have to meet standards to get there so whether you're buying I use Lexars my favorite memory card provider and all my compact flash cards across all my cameras are Lexar Pro cards uh, I know a lot of people who use SanDisk. I know a lot of people who use um, Kingston, and uh, this is a Transcend card. I don't, so you can get them really anything. Honestly, with SD cards, I, I still um, usually use Lexars. This just happens to be the one I had on hand really quickly. So, uh, so I use Lexar, but really the big thing to me is that it needs to be a company that backs their product. And Lexar will always cover my cards. If something happens and this quits working, I can call Lexar and get it um, warrantied and get it replaced if something happens to this. And that's what's important to me. So that's what I'd recommend is that you look at a company that has the standards that you want. Now, when you go to buy memory cards, there's certain things you got to understand. There's price differences, very different price differences for an 8 gigabyte SD card, which this has to be, or this is a 64 gigabyte compact flash card. And you can find these for all different prices. And you're going to be confused. You're going to be like, well, it's 64 gigabytes. What's it matter? Well, there's different ratings. And you're going to notice that when you look at them, there's going to be different ratings like um, something like a number X, like 600X, 800X, 1066X on compact flash cards and SD cards have the same um, number also. And what those are are speed ratings for the reading and writing capabilities of the cards. And so if you buy a 64 gigabyte 600x memory card it's going to be significantly cheaper than a 64 gigabyte 1066x card like this is and so that can be very important though depending on what you're doing if you're a wedding photographer or uh, you're doing something that requires you to take lots of pictures and get them sent to the camera as quickly as possible you're going to want higher read and write speeds if you're doing video um, high and high resolution video you're going to want good read and write cards so Really, it's just, you can play and you can, if, if you're just taking simple photographs, simple things, you can get lower class cards. So, let me see, I'm going to check my little thing here. I'm going to give you some price ideas, because you're going to probably be curious. These are significantly cheaper than these. Uh, for a multitude of reasons, as far as how much goes into making one of these, and the pin connectors, and the difficulty of compact flash cards compared to SD cards. Now, compact flash cards, like this 64 gigabyte 1066X, um, Lexar Pro card costs $124. This little SD card, probably around you five bucks. It's nothing. Uh, but if you want a Lexar Pro SD card, like a 32 gigabyte, it's like 20 bucks or 25 bucks. Where a Lexar Pro 32 gigabyte um, compact flash card is gonna cost you like 80 bucks. So it's like three times the cost as far as compact flash versus SD. But the reasoning for that is, and if you get good compact flash cards, they read and write at almost the same speeds. So like those Lexar Pro cards read and write, uh, read at 160 megabytes per second and write at 155 megabytes per second, or that's what they can obtain. They're, they're the fastest possible read and write speeds. Where the Lexar Pro SD cards will read it, let me see, I've got notes, I'm sorry. Um, will read at 90 megabytes per second. Which is almost, which is a little more than half of what the read capabilities of that um, compact flash cards are, and it'll only write at 45 megabytes per second. So you can get an idea, like there's a big discrepancy as far as maximum um, read and write speeds compared between the two. So 
Uh, next thing I'm going to tell you about is there, so you, there are things written on cards like UDMA and class, like you'll see on SD cards, will be class 1 through 10 or whatever. And those have to do with the industry standards as far as um, minimum write speeds you have to achieve to be in a certain UDMA class or regular class. And there's a maximum read and write speed. Now these scales are different between SD cards and compact flash cards. My Lexar Pros are UDMA 7. I believe it's the highest one that you can get on the market right now. The highest SD class that I think you can get is class 10 cards. I'm not 100% sure about that. Make sure you do your research ahead of time. Uh, and again, it's the same thing as far as the 1066 and 800. It's just a different standard of, uh, of what they have to meet to get those classifications. But when you go to buy them, make sure you check into both those things. So really guys, you need to uh, just decide what you need for your purposes. For me, I really, I'm sometimes doing video like I'm shooting right now. There's um, cases where I've shot weddings where I need super fast read and write speeds. And there's occasions where I need um, to be able to shoot off lots of shots in a row because I'm doing you know, um, a time-lapse photo or something like that. And so I want the best possible um, performance I can get out of my cameras. So that's just me. And I think that for the money, and as long as they last, it's not bad to invest in cards. Uh, the other question people off ask is, should I buy one big card or should I buy lots of smaller cards? My answer to that is, I buy lots of big cards, <laughs> but uh, I travel for weeks at a time, and so it's really important that I have tons of storage with me, and I want to reduce as much weight and possibility that I have to carry with me. So I carry lots of high um, capacity cards, and it also affects the fact that I use high resolution cameras. If you're a photographer who's using a lower resolution camera, you may not need as much space, but I'm using a Nikon D810 that I'm currently shooting this video with, which is a uh, 36 megapixel camera has a very high resolution, large file sizes, so I need as much room as I can possibly get out of them. Now, uh, there is a couple, of, there, there's a new storage type that Nikon is using in their high end cameras, and it's something, I'm not gonna remember the name of them. They're like QXC cards or something like that. And they're kind of like compact flash cards, but they're kind of like this new technology. Uh, so you're only going to see that in very few select cameras. It's not going to be a super common thing, so I wouldn't really worry too much about it. If you are looking at buying specific cameras, like I think the Nikon D4 and D4S, I think has one of these slots in it, and I maybe a Sony camera. But it's not a super common thing right now. They're very pricey, uh, and most of the cameras that are equipped with those types of slots also have a compact flash card slot with them. So if I was, if you're asking my advice for now, I would probably get compact flash cards if you happen to have one of those slots and maybe adopt. If you can, or if you can find them really cheap, like a good deal on them, then maybe you can um, invest in the other kind. But I don't know anybody who actually uses them really right now. So I hope I helped in some way. I just want to explain what some of the numbers meant, give you a couple ideas. Uh, I, if you're just starting out or if you're a seasoned person, just wasn't sure what all those old numbers meant. Um, just to give you an idea of what's going on. So if you guys have any questions, just leave me some comments below and I will do what I can to get back with you um, as soon as possible. Make sure you check out BenzerUFinder.com for my new daily photo every day and we'll see you guys again soon.